Senator, how are you, sir? Doing well, Mike. How about yourself? Aren't you on vacation now? What are you doing? Uh, well, spending a little bit of time with my uh, my family here, but uh, uh, still calling into shows like yours. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, you guys are off for a couple weeks now, right? Right. What? Um, give me the latest. We talked to uh, Bill Haggerty, Senator Haggerty from Tennessee, uh, a couple days ago, I think on Monday, and talked about this bill that that he put forward that would ban taxpayer money being spent on illegal aliens. I guess they, I don't know if they'd be illegal at that point, but people coming from Honduras into America. And the Democrats said, no, we must have that. <laughs> we, we must continue to do that. What's the, what's up with that? Oh, this was during the, you know, the passage of the last minibus. And Republicans put forward a number of, uh, in, in two separate bills, you know, we put for, forward a number of, uh, I think, good amendments that would have denied funding for these agencies for, you know, Again, funding the illegal immigration, uh, funding sanctuary cities. Uh, you know, Haggerty in the first round had a really good amendment saying that uh, illegal aliens could not be included in the census in terms of apportionment of additional congressional mm-hmm. seats. So e- even if you know illegal a- alien is not able to vote, and this administration seems to be trying to do everything they can to get that to happen, uh, they still impact our, our electorate by boosting the numbers and having more uh House members, for example, more electoral votes go to generally blue districts. So, again, that's that's got to be the game plan. Of the Democrats here is change change the electorate. They they want a one party state. It's, it's so we got I don't know how many more months until the election, but it seems like they're doing they're not going to change at all on the border. It seems like they're not pivoting. They're not even pretending to pivot. It seems to alleviate people's concerns. We've been talking about this QPAC poll, where among Republicans, immigration is the number one issue, fifty two percent. Economy at twenty seven. Among independents, immigration and economy are tied at 23%. So there's a big issue even among independents, but they don't even care at all, it seems. It shows you exactly how dedicated they are to this strategy. Uh, and again, yeah. there, there's no other explanation for it. They want to let in millions of people who are going to be highly appreciative of the Democrat Party for allowing them in. Uh, and they plan on really cashing those dividends years at, year after year after year. Uh, again, it's, it's I, I appreciate that Elon Musk has really been using his platform and, and pointing out exactly what's going to happen and, and also recognizing that if, if we don't have a red wave, that uh, America is doomed. Uh, this, this ought to alarm every American, and any American who's paying attention should recognize exactly what the Democrats' game plan is and how destructive it is for America. Okay, America is doomed is a strong sentence. Well, that was, that was Elon Musk's word, but... I must say, we America's on a very dangerous path, and you know, one of the countries we're getting a lot of uh, illegal immigrants from, and reports that uh, they're emptying out their jails and mental institutions, is Venezuela. Venezuela is an oil-rich nation, a successful South American country, until Venezuelans voted themselves into poverty. They voted for Hugo Chavez, and that was the downfall of that country. So it can happen swiftly. And it is happening swiftly here in America. I mean, just, just take a look at this dystopia that is, that is America's large cities. The, the governor of New York having to call up the National Guard to guard the subways. I mean, I mean, we see it, and we've, we're really becoming numb to it, quite honestly. We're kind of like a frog in a pot of water. They've turned up the heat, and we are at a very high simmer right now. And people better re- re- recognize it and get out of that pot. Talking to Senator Ron Johnson from Wisconsin on Venezuela. So the president of Mexico was on 60 Minutes the other day. And he said, yeah, yeah, I'll stop. He said, I'll stop the flow of migrants. Or he said, unless you do these things, we will not stop the flow of migrants. So I'm inversing it. But you have to, you, America, need to commit $20 billion a year to poor countries in Latin America and the Caribbean. You have to end the Cuban embargo, lift sanctions on Venezuela, so two communist countries, and you need to legalize Mexicans living in the United States. He says, then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll stop the flow of migrants. <laughs> what, what do you make of, of that threat? Well, it really extortion? does reveal how weak President Biden has made America and how America is now viewed in the world. You know, when Trump was in office, again, because of President Obama's doc, I mean, that was really what sparked all this, the deferred action on childhood arrivals, that signaled to the rest of the world that that America was pretty easy to get into if you wanted to come here. So, you know, Trump had his own immigration crisis. It didn't last that long because he he ended with 
remain in Mexico, the migrant protection program, uh, other agreements with the Central American countries. But in particular, uh, what really uh, allowed remain in Mexico to kick in and be effective is, uh, you know, the president of Mexico back then wasn't cooperating. So Trump threatened tariffs. And all of a sudden, the, the president of Mexico became very compliant and helped. And within 12 months, we went from almost 5,000 migrants a day, that was his peak, down to about 500 a day. And again, it's just out of sheer willpower, by the way, using the exact same presidential authority that President Biden used to open up the border. So again, Biden has the authority. It's, it's been weakened somewhat by some court decisions, but Trump had that same weakened authority. He closed the border. Biden opened it up. So he has the authority. He just doesn't want to use it. And again, it speaks volumes when he recognized that the Democrats know this is a potent political issue for them, that this, this could doom their chances in terms of this election, and they're not literally lifting a finger to address it. Instead, they, you know, they, they took the, uh, you know, the political cover that McConnell gave them. Um, I'm hoping the American public sees right through that because, again, it's, they want an open border. They cause this problem. Uh, on this poll, this QPAC poll, for Democrats, the number one issue is preserving democracy. And we've just been uh, reveling in the fact that that is, it, like, means nothing, was just created a couple months ago, and no one can define it past just those two words. What, what is that term? Why has that been so effective? When, and when people say that's the biggest issue, what are they, what are they feeling? <laughs> like, wh- wh- where is that coming from? Well, it's effective because mainstream media beats the drum for the Democrat Party. But this, this is a classic example of the left accusing their political opponents of exactly doing what they are doing. If, if there is a party that is destroying this republic, and that's what we have, we have a federated republic, it is the Democrat Party. Uh, they are the ones that, uh, you know, the Hillary Clinton campaign, they're, they're the ones that came up with the Russian collusion hoax. And then the FBI latched onto that, and, and the actors, you know, the radical leftist actors within our deep state uh, ran with that and, and had the, you know, the corrupt two-year investigation, uh, the special counsel, the impeachment. Uh, now they're using the, the awesome power of our federal law enforcement, Department of Justice, intelligence agencies, uh, exercising lawfare against President Trump, which, which is way too mild a term. It, 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 it doesn't describe the harm, the, the torment, the, the power that is being used against one individual because he's, he's a disruptor. I always describe Trump before he got elected as he's the political equivalent of a disruptive technology. And the uniparty, the establishment, can, cannot afford that kind of disruption. That is why they've done everything they could to destroy him, his presidency in between 2016, 2017, and you know through 2020, and now they're doing everything they can to destroy him so he doesn't get back into office. That's right. Um, talking with Senator Ron Johnson from Wisconsin. So, abortion. Uh, there was a house, a, a state house race in Alabama, yeah, I guess yesterday or the other day, and uh, the Democrat flipped it in a blowout. And the left is saying it's because of uh, the recent Alabama Supreme Court stuff that MSNBC has gone loco about with in vitro fertilization and abortion and they're taking this and the Biden White House has come out with a statement saying this is all about women's rights and that's how they flipped this Alabama seat. I don't know if you know the inner workings of uh, House Seat 10 in Alabama State House, but they're making this as a larger thing for the nation. I'm as, just, you know, I'm as pro-life as they could possibly come, uh, but I also recognize that at the moment in certain places, this, it's a real election loser and I lament that deeply. Uh, and I'm not giving up on it. I'm not softening my position at all. I'll lose elections and stand for it. But I think it just is. How do we, so preserving democracy is their big one, but then their second play is uh, women's rights. What do we do with that in this next few months? Well, again, another example of the power when you control the media. So they, they take this Alabama decision, which I think is immediately, almost immediately reversed by the Alabama legislators saying, no, we're, we're for IVF. This, you know, this is a, it's, a, it's, it's an outlier decision, no doubt about it, okay? And then they'll blow that up to make it seem like Republicans are extreme on abortion when the exact opposite is true. Uh, the extreme position on abortion, this is you know, confirmed by poll after poll after poll, would be unlimited abortion up to the moment of birth. Uh, most, most Republicans support you know, 
14 weeks, 15 weeks, 20 weeks. You know, many of us have voted to protect life after 20 weeks. Now that, again, that's, that's five months into a pregnancy, okay? Um, that, the extreme position is allowing abortion up to the moment of birth, and then in some cases, some of these guys, they, won't, they would actually deny care to a child that's born live. That is the extreme position. It's obvious that's the extreme position, but the media doesn't point that out. And instead, they, they use words like, Republicans want to ban abortion. Uh, well, yeah, listen, I, I think many that are 100% pro-choice, life begins conception, I think most of us believe that, but you know, I think most Republicans understand that up to a point, it is, it is a woman's body, and these are difficult decisions. But at some point, at some point, society has a responsibility to protect life. That's a reasonable position. But again, the mainstream mm-hmm. media will never point that out. I mean, that, that's what I recommended uh, during my campaign is, Let's have the voters of Wisconsin vote on a referendum to decide at what point does society have the responsibility to protect life. Let the people decide. And if the people decided, by the way, like they have in Europe, you're going to start protecting life sometime after 12 weeks, 15 weeks, somewhere in that range. And I think most Americans would agree with that's pretty reasonable. And by the way, most abortions occur well before that point.